Welcome to the Brass and Woodwind Shop. Every Friday for the last few months I've done an instrument restoration series. I have finished an old Herald trumpet and an old cornet. I'd like to introduce you to the new instrument that I'm going to be working on. It's a Yamaha Custom Alto Saxophone. Overall it's in very good condition, but the pads have been getting sticky and they've been starting to leak. So the customer wants me to do a repad on this instrument, and this is a customer's instrument, and he did give me permission to video me working on it. The other two instruments I have overhauled had a lot wrong with them. This one has not very much wrong with it. I'm just going to be replacing the corks and the pads and adjusting it. I will not be polishing it. You may think that it does not look very shiny. That's because there's no lacquer on it, and that is okay. A lot of people like the look of instruments with no lacquer on them, and with saxophones, it's not usually a good idea to re-lacquer them. A lot of saxophone players say that it hurts the instruments to re-lacquer them, so if the lacquer comes off, just leave it off and leave it bare brass. The first thing I'm going to do to this instrument is take it all apart. These are all the tools I'm going to need to take apart the instrument, if everything goes well. If I run into problems, I'll probably need to use other tools. This is a screw board, and it has all the holes for the screws and the hinge rods. And this helps you to keep all of the screws in order, so that when you put it back together, it's easier to put back together. And also, you get the correct screw and the correct hole, because if you do not, it might cause problems. It might work fine, but it can cause problems. This is the round nose pliers, and I use that to pull out some of the hinge rods after I unscrew them. There are three screwdrivers I'm going to use. This is the large woodwind screwdriver, and it's going to be used for the pivot screws. On this instrument, the pivot screws have a larger head to them, so this one will work for that. And then the medium woodwind screwdriver is going to be used for the, uh, the hinge rods. And the regular Phillips screwdriver, this is like something you'd have in your tool chest. And that is going to be used on the guard screws. This is a spring hook, and you can tell it was homemade. On the one end, there is a little hook that you can use to hook the springs. And then if you need to push the springs, the other end has a little notch in it, and you can use that to push the springs. I'm going to start with the neck. There's just one key on the neck, so that one is easy. I'm going to start at the top with the octave mechanism, and octave mechanisms on saxophones are quite different. Actually, the entire key mechanism on saxophones are quite different than most saxophones. Like flutes and clarinets, those are pretty much all the same, but uh, saxophones, different brands of saxophones do it differently. There are a lot of different types of saxophone octave mechanisms, but there are some similarities. There are always two octave keys, one body octave key and one neck octave key. There's always a lever that opens up the neck octave key, and then there's some type of rocker, like this one here, that opens up either one or the other of the keys, depending on if you have the G key pushed down or not. The foot for the G key is right there, and that controls the mechanism which opens up one or the other octave keys. There's always a lever that you push with your thumb that engages the whole mechanism. And those are similar, but there are a lot of different parts, and this is the way they do it on this one. So I'm going to put the octave mechanism parts right down at the bottom of the key thing. That's how I keep them in order. Now I'm going to take out the octave lever. Okay, oh, this is a hinge rod. I thought it was going to be two pivot screws, but it turns out it's a hinge rod. And I'll show you what pivot screws are in just a minute. Now I'm going to remove the palm keys. They're called palm keys because you play them with the palm of your hand. And there are three palm keys, the high D key, the high E flat key, and the high F key. So I'm going to pull those out. Put the screws in there. When you unscrew the hinge rods, it does look easy to do, and it's not that hard. But there is an actual skill to doing it without destroying your the saxophone. Because if this uh, if the screwdriver slips, you're going to hurt the body of the saxophone, or you might poke your own hand. So what you do is you never would pull out a screw like this because it will slip, and then you get a hole in your hand. Or also, if you just push really hard like that, you're going to slip. It's going to get a big scratch right down the saxophone. You don't want that. So what you do is you use your thumb to guide the screwdriver. And you make sure that your hand's out of the way. And your thumb also, it's pushing up. So if the screwdriver slips, it's going to slip like that. 
and it's going to miss your hand and miss the body of the saxophone. A lot of times these screws are stuck in place and you need to be careful because you need to push a lot with a lot of pressure to get them out or at least get them started and once they're started usually they're fairly easy to get out uh, but a lot of times they're in there pretty good so a lot of times you need to push really hard to get the hinge rod started so you need that's when you need to be careful because when you're pushing hard that's when things slip okay that one came out easily so far I have not hit any really stuck screws uh, just like the normal but uh, you can often get stuck screws in here and those are the tricky ones to get out okay next I'm going to do these upper keys here on this post this post has three different screws on it that hold on three different keys so I'm going to take those off and I'm going to do the G key first okay this saxophone is not really causing me many problems yet a lot of times by this point I would encounter a stuck screw or something on uh, this one I have not encountered any of that yet. To keep these pivot screws straight, instead of just going down the row and getting all three of those, I'm going to turn this around and finish getting the G key pivot screw off of there. So This one I, it's harder to put my thumb under so I'm just keeping my hand out of the way and making sure that I have control of the screwdriver. When I put the saxophone back together, I know that the G key is right here and that the bottom screw on the G key, this screw, goes right here and that the upper one goes on top of that. So on this board, I know that I put the top screw on the top, the bottom screw on the bottom. So now the G sharp key, I'm sorry, the G key is ready to come off and the spring is holding that on. So I'm going to use a spring hook to remove that spring. That way there won't be tension on it. Sometimes when you pull, a, sometimes when there's a spring on a key and you pull it, you can bend the spring. You can bend it back, but you'd rather not have to make extra work. And also, there's a limit to how many times you can bend a spring before it breaks. Now I'm going to remove the high F sharp key. It used to be that saxophones did not have high F sharp keys, and now it's fairly standard to have them, even on student models. So. Pretty much all modern saxophones have the high F sharp key. So put that screw there, turn it around, and pull up the other high F sharp pivot screw. That is what a pivot screw looks like. Pivot screws hold in keys like this, and then the key rotates around the pivot screw. Hinge rods go all the way through the key, and then the key rotates around the hinge rod. Some brands of saxophones have more pivot screws than others, uh, like Bundy only has six pivot screws in it, and uh, others have as many as like oh, 15 or 20 pivot screws. And this one I think is going to have quite a few. I'm not sure yet. I have not counted. But I think this one will probably have towards the higher end of the pivot screws. After these keys on top are off, then I can get at the left hand keys and there's one hinge rod that goes through four different keys right here. Some saxophone brands have them a lot longer and they go through seven different keys. But this one, it goes through four keys. I'm going to pull that hinge rod out and get all those keys out at the same time. This is a round nose pliers and I use that to pull out the hinge rods. Sometimes I get them out with my fingers. But the longer ones I usually pull out with the pliers. Okay, then that goes there. And this is the high C key, the A key, no, I'm sorry, the B key, the A key, and then the, let's see, lost a part, where did it go? And then there's usually the lever, oh wait, that's right, Yamaha does not put the levers on here. Most uh, brands put the levers on this hinge rod, the high F sharp auxiliary lever. Yamaha puts it right here, so there is there, there are only three keys on this one and not four. Here are two of the pads. Now these pads will still work, but they are getting a little older and crusty, and they're functional, but it's one of those things where should I replace them or not, and then, you know, they're borderline if you should replace them. On this saxophone, I certainly could just level these pads and make them work and adjust them. That is a legitimate option. 
but the customer just wants to start fresh with all new pads and all new corks. So I'm going to pull these off, even though we could still get a few more years out of them. But the customer wants this to play well. A lot of times if you just replace one or two pads at a time, then the customer has to come in every few months and get it taken care of one or two pads at a time. So sometimes it's better just to do it all at once. There's the B-flat key. That one gets tucked right underneath everything. If you need to get only this key off, you have to take off a whole bunch of other keys to get at that one. Now I'm going to pull off the side keys. There are two side keys on saxophones, the side C key and the side B flat key. And there are two levers that control those keys. And you may notice me using the words keys and levers. The keys have a pad on them, like those two. And then levers have the touch piece or usually a touch piece, I guess they don't need to have the touch piece, but they do not have a pad on them. I noticed on this saxophone that these side keys and levers seem a little sluggish. You probably cannot see it in the video, but they don't have a good feel to them. And that there are lots of different reasons for that. I'm going to pull those apart. I'm going to keep an eye out for what might be causing it to be a little sluggish. When I put it back together, I'm going to make sure that those keys work well. Now it's getting a little trickier because there are all these needle springs that want to poke me. And, of course, I don't want to get poked, so I'm going to set the saxophone up like that and get at it that way. It looks a little awkward, but... Okay, yeah, this one doesn't want to come out very easily. This may be rusted in there. That, there. It may have some rust on it or something, and that could be a reason why it's a little sluggish. Let's see... This one does not want to come out easily, so I'm going to continue with these and then I'm going to go back to that one after I have some more of the stuff out of the way. You'll notice that there are a lot of really sharp needle springs all over the saxophone and those things want, it seems like they just want to reach out and grab you and poke you. When you first start working on saxophones, you get poked all the time, but after you've done it for a while, you get a little better at figuring out how to work without getting poked. There's a hinge rod holding in this lever, and that seems to be a little tight, too. It's not coming out nicely. Uh, and, yeah, I can tell that is sluggish there. My guess is that probably there's some junk hardened on that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the larger screwdriver. It's a little bit longer, and it has a little more leverage to it. And I'm going to be careful, because you can rip up the sides of posts when you use the larger screwdrivers. So I'm going to be very careful not to do that. I'm going to... Uh, let's see, I'm going to put that in, I'm going to put that in the slot like that, and I am putting it in sideways because it is a larger screwdriver. Okay, there we go. So that loosened it. Now that's loosened, I'll go back to this screwdriver. It's not that stuck. I run into screws that are a lot more stuck very often, but it's offering a little bit of resistance. So you just have to be careful. Keep an eye on it, pay attention to what you're doing, and pull it out just a little at a time. Okay, I think I got it all the way out now. Let's see. No, not quite. Probably a little bit left. Okay. There we go. And that, uh, that hinge rod is out. Now I'm going to go back to the side B flat key. And what I'm going to do this time, since it had problems, I'm going to set the saxophone down like this. And I'm going to put the screwdriver in like that. I'm going to hold down on it. I'm holding down with one hand and turning with the other hand. And that's why they have this on the top of these screwdrivers. So that it's like a pivot so that you can use a little more force if you need to, to get screws out. So I'm going to put that on there, hold it down, and turn it. Now I have to be careful because if the screwdriver does slip now, it could scratch the key up. So I'm going to be careful not to let it slip. But I'm pushing down with quite a bit of pressure. And then I'm going to turn it. There it goes. Okay. And now I'm relieving the pressure on it and just using light pressure. You only use as much pressure as you need. You try not to use any more or any less than you need. Too much pressure can cause things to slip and cause damage. Too little pressure can cause the screwdriver to slip. And then that chews up the heads of the screws. And there's not a lot of metal on there. You can see 
right there, there's not a lot of metal and these little slots can get all chewed up. So you have to be careful with these things. If a screw does get chewed up too badly, you can cut off a tiny little bit of the head of it and then cut a new slot on it, but you'd rather not have to do that if you don't need to.